Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is William Henry. I'm the author of Ascension, Divine Stories of Awakening the Whole and Holy Being Within. And I am honored and delighted today to be joined by Drs. J.J. and Desiree Hertog, living legends in the field of ascension, modern physics, science, on the cutting edge of human transformation and have been for decades. It's uh, just an absolute pleasure to have them uh, to join me today, and even more so to announce that they are part of my new book. They're, they have contributed a, an amazing story uh, to this Ascension book, and I'm, we're going to talk about that as, as we go. So let's bring on Drs. JJ and Desiree Hertog. Thank you so much, William. It's always great to be with you. Uh, you are truly a gifted writer. We honor this new book, Ascension, a key word to the whole evolutionary change that's taking place. We have had the opportunity to visit world cultures, but the same theme comes again into the forefront. Where are we going as a human civilization? And the answer is we're going into cosmic ascension. And I have to say you're a great researcher, and I think that's also part of your talent, because you've been able to look at various cultures around the world and see really throughout <laughs> that there's an importance about the power of ascension. And I know you mentioned the Buddha in the text, but also a lot of it is Egypt, which is all our mutual favorite place. And of course, the whole idea of the Pharaoh going up into the stars was maybe one of the earliest concepts of ongoing life. Absolutely. And, and part of the, the motivation for, for writing the book was ascension is such a buzzword today. There's so many people that are awakening to this concept. And I felt that it was important to establish a timeline so people can understand that this isn't something that's just come out of nowhere. It, it's been ongoing for thousands of years. And in fact, we may be the culmination of an ascension process that, as you mentioned, was begun at least 5,000 years ago, probably much uh, long ago than that. Right. But I also know that we have a mutual understanding of the power of the Christ and the understanding that we feel we've been to see the Shroud of Turin a couple of times. And that really it shows that you can take your physical body and you can literally change every cell within it into light. And we go back all, we're very biblically oriented as, as you are too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it even says from our beginnings as Adam, or we call it Adamic species, that there was mostly a light body. And then we became physical yes. in this reality. We took on bodies of skin is what it says. So what are we talking about, about ascension? Reversing that process. That's and we honor also the reverence that you share for all great traditions mm -hmm. from the text called pyramid texts in Saqqara, Egypt, to the oriental traditions, to the mystery schools. Yes. What is so important here is the high quality of insight that you provide, realizing that there is a written history, but there is also a, what I would call a mystical tradition that is based upon actual experience without the experience of the greater light the greater divine connection of the human soul with the divine mind of the universe. We're just talking words. We're not talking about the essential givens of ascension on all basic levels, from the subatomic to the heart, to the mind, to the astral, to the higher spiritual. Right. And I, I love that word, it, that ascension is an experience, and especially that it's something, as Desiree just re referred to, that we do while we're living. It is, it's something we're engaging in. We're reconnecting with our true divine nature, our light body. And in the book, you contributed such an amazing story about your experience with a light being in a pillar of light. Would you, would you mind sharing just some of that with us? Yes. Uh, I studied uh, the ancient Coptic text. I went to Egypt as a young scholar to understand what the Coptic theologians and philosophers were speaking of when they said, and they wrote in this Clepius, a very interesting text, that Egypt was once the schoolhouse of the gods. They came and then they ascended back into the heavens and Egypt became a land of corpses. Anyway, in my work with uh, ancient texts, both Greek uh, as well as Hebrew, and then later with the Egyptian, I began to experiment in deep meditation. And there was a point of which, as I explain in the chapter that Desiree and I provide, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the pillar of light appeared, and I was absorbed in this pillar of light and essentially taken into higher dimensional realities. So now, this happened several times, and I brought a picture 
to go with the story mentioned in the chapter, which yeah, is yeah. taken in the area of Tulu, Mexico, where there are ancient pyramidal ruins in the background. And I'm standing there in the process of making evocations or affirmations of the names of God. And suddenly light appears around my body that is so powerful that even the translator is taken back. And a man taking a picture of his wife in the foreground of the picture is able to capture the details of what we call superluminal or high energy experiences. Right. But also Dr. Tech had his own unique experience, as he was saying, in 73. And, um, you know, this is really almost very similar to Enoch. And I know you mentioned like Enoch, Elijah. There's many people in the Old Testament that also had that experience of ascension. And uh, the unique thing about Enoch is that he went into the higher worlds, but then he came back. Right. He was brought back so that he could write about what the heavens are all about. And right. uh, I think that's part of uh, also uh, Dr. Urdak's experience. But I want to say when we move into really looking at your book, that you give some, uh, we'll say, ways, methodologies of how to grow into that power of ascension. And I think that that's also very important for all of us. Biblical yeah, but, as well as not biblical f- f- uh, but, characters and personalities that you bring to the foreground bring a message of devotion to the human race, devotion to what we will call the spiritual journey, devotion to the, shall we say, the deeper commitment that one must have to understand the whole picture of what ascension is. It's not a buzzword. It's an experience of the higher and the human coming together, the man-God, woman-God partnership. And the, the key thing, too, for me is that it's a collective process as well. It's a collective experience that the work that each individual is doing, they might feel intimidated that they might not be able to manifest that high vibration and bring in a pillar of light or take a journey into another realm, a higher realm. However, every thought that they think, every action that they take towards the direction of becoming more whole and indeed more holy is helping the collective. And that is the point, is that we're trying to raise not just ourselves, but the entire human race to this next higher level. This is really the time of ascension. And even if it's not the physical ascension that we've been talking about, Dr. Hirtak did have this unique experience where he was taken for actually two days into these other realms and came back and talked about very similar to Enoch. But Mm -hmm. the idea is that all of us have the ability to do a consciousness ascension. And that is what I think is so critical right now. If we're going to just look at the planet from the very practical, logical level, we're not going to understand what's taking place. The higher consciousness allows us to see past, present, and future and really have a greater reality to, to how to implement our lives on this planet. And it's the same with the emotional. If we're going to get emotional about things, we're also not going to be clear. The only way to be clear is what we call an overview effect, which is that power of ascension. Right. So, William, one thing I liked about your work is you used Egypt as one of your major points of departure. This is where we did work in the discovery of the tomb of Osiris in 1997. And we used certain musical harmonics or uh, we will call acoustical physics mm-hmm. to go beneath the portal of the great pyramid uh, slightly off the what we call the passageway that connects with the sphinx where we located this underground three level tomb of osiris and what Stem. we know through egyptian history and mythology is when the the knowledge of osiris is known the whole planetary humanity is being prepared for contact with the higher worlds. And this is really the backstory to your book is behind the scenes, all world cultures and scientists of the various cultural traditions are being made aware that we are not alone in the universe and that we are being prepared and summoned to put all the bits and pieces together that we are essentially light beings in human forms. We are gravitationally trapped light in the physical form, but as we change our energy vibrations, we begin to glimpse and actually experience the sparks of light that make us so we similar to the great master teachers of glory. Absolutely. And this is part of, um, I think, what some in Christianity would certainly term the second coming, the rising up to meet the Christ. It's not just a, a rising up into the air. It's a rising of vibration and a transformation on an individual level aimed towards that. And a key part of that, as well as the gathering of all these beings from across the universe on Earth. And 
this is also part of the ascension process that we're we're rising up in order to be able to perceive to contact and to live with these these higher realities in these higher realities with these higher beings and we kind of say there's eight billion people now on this planet and i think they're here because this is a, such a critical time. That's why the Ascension book is so critical because we all have to be prepared for that. And again, it doesn't have to mean that we're completely leaving this planet and we don't have to wait till we die and all that stuff. We can ascend in our higher consciousness and that's the important thing. And you show some practical ways of clearing not only the physical body, but also the consciousness mind to be mm -hmm. able to tap into that higher awareness. We believe that there's this huge quantum field and any information that's in the universe, we can actually receive and be part of. And that's why we can even know the future. I'm sure some of your audience has already done some deja vu types of experiences or precognition. Well, what I liked about your book was your emphasis also on the word Merkaba, which in Hebrew means the spiritual vehicle of ascension, yeah. which is not to be identified with an extraterrestrial spaceship of metallurgy, but right. the Merkaba is really a manifestation of the light preparation we need to go to the next level of evolutionary change. We would call it going from the third dimension to the fifth dimension, going from humankind to space kind with the recognition that we have privileges, we have opportunities of participation if we, shall we say, go mentally and spiritually to a higher level of resonance. Mm -hmm. In the Hebrew, this is called the Neshama, the soul spirit that comes together well, right. we realize that there is a divine family that we're a part of, and the dissension process also allows us to understand there are many different types of ascension. There's different responsibilities for the different levels of the evolutionary process. Right. So you, you touch upon all bases, and I commend you for singling out uh, the figure of Moses, the figure of Enoch, Elijah, all of them represent together collectively what we would call a union of master teachers who represent not only the light body, but what we would call the language of light, that there are actual phonemes and morphemes of ancient Egyptian, Hebrew, Aramaic, special sacred language that helps us reprogram our DNA so that we are live participants in something that is far beyond just uh, science fiction. And your work together has advanced that knowledge so tremendously. And um, also, additional motivation and the reason why I think we need to pay attention to this now is we're we're living in the age of AI and transhumanism, where there is a a push for a different kind of an, an ascension, a a different kind of a light body, one made of ones and zeros, a cartoon avatar body that exists online, and that is a real temptation, I think, for especially younger people today to want to embrace that aspect of ascension. It's something I caution about. I just wonder what your thoughts might be on, on what's happening with AI and transhumanism. Well, we had the opportunity years ago to work with colleagues at Stanford Research Institute, SRI International, in Silicon Valley, where the background work was being done to show mind over matter does exist, and that both the physical as well as the mental come out of the realm of consciousness. This is generally being accepted now as basic to the new science, that we are mm -hmm. not just a happenstance a collaboration of our particles, but we are working with a greater uh, energy envelope that illustrates the human form. The same time in Silicon Valley, we have what is called transhumanism that mm -hmm. would like to have us surrender our consciousness rights and privileges to think that we're simply a biochip that can be activated by supercomputers and give us, shall we say, all the knowledge of the universe. And, right. you know, it may be interesting, but uh, we feel we've lectured about this at universities because we've told them, look, these are all the possibilities of the science, but where's the consciousness? Right. And when we know we can do remote viewing to see something that's happening on the other side of the world, you're not going to be able to get that with AI unless you tap into the Internet. And that right. could go down at any point. So our developing our higher consciousness body and understanding the abilities that we have, which are beyond any kind of scientific robot it would is really just fantastic we don't realize our own potential to right. heal to help to empower to send energy for all of this and this is what ascension is all about to, to take back who we truly were as divine beings right. so let's look to the future william what this book is conveying what all the other contributions is that the whole concept of ascension is, is a pluralistic there is no one given methodology, but it requires right. a holistic 
grasp of all humanity essentially being one person, one manifestation of the divine and human form. Right. And as we begin to assimilate your insights and those of others, we begin to realize, really, this is the greatest time in history to be alive, to True. recognize that globally, humanity is being prepared, not only by so-called government disclosure pro projects and programs, but by testimony of independent writers such as ourselves, to realize that we are being prepared to be cosmic citizens. And that takes place through the vehicle of ascension, the recognition that we can, so we say, bootstrap our whole program, our DNA, and our mental processes through positive thinking and what we will call metaphysical vibrations. And that's something I so appreciate about your work too, is the way you, you know, emphasis on positive thinking. We don't have the luxury of a negative thought and, and the power of our consciousness to transform the material world. That is so vital right now. And I agree with you. This is perhaps the most exciting time in, in all of human history. The decisions that each of us are making on an individual and in a daily basis are feeding into a thought sphere that will, as, as Desiree just said, feed that consciousness that will enable us to transcend the challenges of AI, transhumanism, even uh, climate change and some of the other issues that are that are threatening or some perceive as threatening our species right now. It really is the great unifier. Uh, developing our ascension intelligence as an antidote to artificial intelligence and awakening the, the divine within. That's that's our sole purpose right now. If we get it right, we can't even imagine, begin to comprehend or imagine the world that we'll be living in. And that's what it's so exciting and why we want to bring people's stories of ascension together because men, men and women on the street are experiencing things that feed into this consciousness and they need to have a place to be able to put it. Right. I love the additional stories. Of course, we're one of them in your new book. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's great because people are having these experiences. Like, for example, one time there was like a, a fire coming close to where we were. We, in Sedona. Yeah. And we had the whole town and, and everyone working together to push that away because those are our Through collective abilities. consciousness. We can make changes. We can empower ourselves. But in addition to this, I think what also you know very well is we're not alone in the fact that there are beings who are trying to help us right. to realize our own potential, to give us that information, to help us grow. And a lot of this, especially if you can work with the Christed energy or the Buddha energy, will really give us that uh, divine ability so that we can truly be ready for anything that comes our way. Right, right. In fact, if I can just say one of the most important parts of scripture, I was always interested in with that event on the Mount, known as the Mount of Transfiguration, where both Jesus uh, as well as Moses suddenly find the companionship of Elijah. Right. Moses representing the cosmic law, Jesus the light body, Elijah the Merkaba. You have really an essence, all of the sacred journeys and experiences expressed in terms of a brotherhood of light, a brotherhood of teaching, a brotherhood of compassion. And I think okay. this is really the outreach of your new book is to bring people together in spiritual unity, to bring people together in the positive view of the future, not one that one lives in uh, fear of, but yeah. one acknowledges that we are being prepared to be cosmic citizens and participants in the glorious realm of something far beyond the human evolution. And finally, we have the opportunity through our collective writings and opportunities throughout the world, shall we say, to manifest a type of university without walls of teaching now through the internet, through eBooks, to allow people to quickly catch up and to understand that there is magnificent information that's coming out of Egypt, for example, with the recent scan project of the Japanese and French that suggests there are mm -hmm. other rooms and other documents possibly that are there to fill in the missing gaps of history. So oh. we are at the shall we say, the threshold of a great leap forward. Absolutely. And we appreciate, I was going to say, we really appreciate your book. We're so happy that it's coming out now. It's a great time to have it. You have some great writers in there as well. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. It, it is so inspiring just to hear your voices. I'm so fired up now, ready to go. And it, again, it's such an honor and pleasure to walk this path with you at this time of history with all of your background, the wisdom, the, the teachings, the insight that you've brought and uh, in, imparted to us even today. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. JJ and Desiree. It's just an absolute honor to be with you today. Thank you. If I may use the Greek words, ad astra to the stars, may our work together 
Now, many projects of the future continue to open the archives of knowledge that we may understand what it really means to be world citizens of a new scientific culture that's yeah. coming our direction. And to move into ascension. Through spiritual love, unity, and the divine spark. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, and God bless you, and we'll look forward to seeing you in person soon.